We respectfully acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation who are the traditional owners of the land on which we record this podcast and recognise their continuing connection to the lands, waters and community. We pay our respects to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures and to the Elders past, present and emerging. Hello and welcome to We'll Get It In Post. I'm your host, Dom Hennequin, and I'm here with Amy Bryans. Hello. And Curtis Mason. Hello. (laughs) Today we're talking about Tick, Tick, Boom. It's a musical film that has been on Netflix for a couple of months now and is getting a bit of awards buzz for a few things. Um, Jono, what, what is this film about? Okay. So according to the Google page for Tick, Tick, Boom, it reads... Based on the autobiographical musical by playwright Jonathan Larson, it's the story of an aspiring composer in New York City who is worried he made the wrong career choice whilst navigating the pressures of love and friendship. Oh, sounds Beautiful. nice. Yeah. yeah, nice little film. Mm. It's directed by Lynn Manuel Miranda. Who's that? I don't know. Up and coming. Never uh, heard of him. Yeah, fresh face. I think. Mm. Yeah, uh, and it stars Andrew Garfield in the lead role of Jonathan Larson, mm. Robin D. Jesus as uh, his roommate, um, Alexandra Ship as his partner at one point, Vanessa Hudgens and Joshua Henry as the backup singers, and then appearances by Judith Light and Bradley Whitford. Um, this is sort of like there's a couple of musical movies around this season. Um, this one isn't getting as much praise as something like West Side Story as a, as a film, as a whole. Um, but I thought it was kind of like a fun sort of romp <laughs> overall and something that musical theatre fans will really, really like. What did the two of you think about it and, you know, sort of knowing that the both of you like musicals as well? Yeah, I, I think this m- movie was not for me per se. Um, my, my love of going to the movies or even just watching something on Netflix is all about the dark expanse, the slow burn. Um, it's all about the atmosphere and, um, the character development. I think this movie was just too much like bam, 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 bam for me. I couldn't focus. Um, and I understand, I understand it's not lost on me that that was how, um, you know, Rent was written um, and in a sense this musical was originally written and Jonathan Larson's writing style was originally in that same sort of vein. But for me, it just, um, it's not my, my cup of tea, but a lot of people have, um, have liked it and um, I mm. can see why why mm. it's getting the praise it has, especially for Andrew Garfield's performance. I think that he did yeah. a really transformative um, job of uh, portraying Jonathan Larson. Yeah. Mm. Jonathan Larson, obviously, in this moment of his career, is really fighting for almost for survival, really, like to make sure that he didn't make the wrong choice. Um, choosing, you know, pretty hard profession and a pl- pretty hard place to succeed, um, trying to be a musical theatre composer and a writer in New York City in yeah. the 90s with no money. Yeah. Um, do you think that, you know, what Curtis is saying, it sounds like they maybe successfully pulled off sort of the mood of it, but it wasn't for everyone. What do you think, Aime? Um, I think that if we step back for a moment and look at musical movies in the last couple of decades, um, there's been a lot of flops recently Mm. um you know two big ones that come to mind would be um the producers um screen adaption that was a a critical and and um commercial flop and then very recently of course the now legendary um legendarily bad and panned dear evan hansen um Mm. normally i've found that um in in filmmaking these days they will be pretty conservative with the, ch- the choices. They're going to go for the safe options. And even when they go for the safe options, they're not always successful as per Dear Evan Hansen. So the fact that they took a small musical that generally um, is mostly for, you know, the diehard musical theatre fans um, and it is second to its more famous rent. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, with that in mind, um, I think that it's success and it's um critical um, attention it's been getting getting is quite impressive. I think like we can't underestimate the fact that this film really does not get made if it weren't for Lin-Manuel Miranda pushing it and going, this is the film I want to direct. I want to do this because, you know, he played the Larson role in a performance of it. He 
was obviously inspired, I think it's no secret, by Larson and the way that he got to Broadway mm. with how he himself as sort of like a younger generation got to Broadway, yep. you know, with a completely different kind of style of music than sort of what was there. So there's a lot of parallels there and there's obviously yeah. reasons he wanted to tell that story. But I think what's been baffling to me has been the response and the sort of people in my social circle that aren't necessarily like diehard musical theatre fans that you would expect to watch this – um, have ended up watching it and liking it. And I think that that's quite remarkable for yeah. a film that, like, isn't a remake. It was, you know, this isn't a musical that's, like, toured the world and been, you know, like no. Rent. This is, like, a niche show that, yeah. like, wasn't even really complete or the way that it was when, yeah. but like, by the time that Larson died. It's so niche for a non. How do you explain this to someone that doesn't care about musical theatre? So there's this really <laughs> famous show called Rent. And the creator died the night it opened. You can imagine just yeah. struggling to. So you know, already you know we're Rent. lost. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you know. So, <laughs> yeah. so the the writer yeah. of that, and, and he, he wrote, died. And he wrote this show before Rent. It's not as good. It's not as famous. But it's <laughs> yeah. it's this, and it's about his life before he wrote Rent. Like you know, like how do you? So yeah, how do you like sell that in? Like when you know the big ones often don't do well on screen, like mm. the producers, as we said. So yeah, um, Look, yeah. I, I think that. <laughs> If it weren't for Netflix picking this up, mm. I feel like this film would have made about $10,000 at the box office. <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it's not getting picked up and being shared on TikTok by <laughs> young people. Oh, God. I said yeah, it. You said it. Whoa. <laughs> it's not getting picked up and, you know, plastered all over TikTok. Um, it's not that type of film. It's very niche. And I think that, um, yeah, Netflix is probably the right place for it to sit and um, just, I don't know. Yeah, and they're lucky that Jonathan Larson. Uh, uh, sorry, is that um, alive to watch it? No, no <laughs> they're lucky that Jonathan Larson is portrayed by Andrew Garfield, who's having a bit of a renaissance at the moment. Um, yeah. every, everyone's like, you know, um, retroactively deciding that he was actually good in Spider Man, and everyone, <laughs> yeah, everyone, yeah, everyone, everyone on TikTok actually has been obsessed with him lately. Yeah, yeah. Like he's been all over, um, like with his clips. They're even bringing up like old videos of him and like when Emma Stone were dating, mm, yeah. and they're chucking him and Tick Tick Boom up there. And he's Spider Man felt like he is, you know, he's and a- he's in like twenty films this season oh, yeah. as yeah. well. So it really is the season for him. Let's talk a bit more about his performance and what he did well in this because they do at the end of it, and you know, while they've been promoing this film, they do show some footage of um, Jonathan Larson. And there's things that they've recreated from these sort of home videos um, astonishingly well. But Mm. there are moments where, like, he's really captured um, the essence of Jonathan Larson, even if he doesn't look exactly Mm. like him. Yeah. Uh, What did Garfield get right in this? I think he did a lot of research into this role and he really characterises uh, Jonathan Larson from what I've seen in, in interviews and things like that as well of Jonathan Larson. I think he, his research just um, shows that shines. It goes to the very top. Mm-hmm. Um, he has this manic quality about him, um, but also this very likeable and relatable nature to him. Yeah. But, I was yeah. going to say like his backstory and what he's trying to do could easily, you could just not feel any yeah. sympathy yeah, for him absolutely. with what he's trying to do. Yeah, yeah. How sort of, you know, re, you know, he's the he's, creator. He seems like the he's nice man. It's a bit self... You could... Or I do think, actually, it's all a bit self-indulgent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't like Rent at all. Um, and I don't, therefore, even though I've sort of set off the conversation about how objectively it's been quite well made and all of that, personally, this film was actually not for me at all. Mm. Uh, I don't really like Rent and therefore the chances of me liking Tick, Tick, Boom... Um, were low. Um, tick, tick, boom. I think if you're a Rent fan and you love Rent, you're going to love this movie because yeah. it's ju- it's just going to expand on your understanding of Rent and the themes in Rent even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you don't like Rent, it's going to confirm for you all of your deeper <laughs> suspicions yeah. Yeah. about what sort of um you know what sort of person um Jonathan Larson is. Um, so for me, um. Therefore, even though I really don't like it and I, I'm, I've never really been into um, Jonathan Larson, Garfield still remains likeable. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he really does. He um, puts so much into this role and I think that's something that people are finally starting to realise that he has been putting in quite a big effort in a lot of his roles over the past few years. It's just that now people are finally starting to pay attention and I think the momentum has been building for a while. You know, he did Angels in America on yeah. stage um, and that was 
very well received. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm dying to watch that production. Yeah, um, I want to do it as well. Yeah, yeah. I just finished um, watching the uh, mini series. Oh, yeah. right. Mini series, yeah. which is also very good. There's a very funny tweet uh, that I've seen recently, and I think he addressed it on one of the late night shows. Um, but it said, "There's no denying that Andrew Garfield puts his whole Andrew Garfussy into every <laughs> single role that he plays," <laughs> and I just think that is so funny. <laughs> Yeah. He's so funny. If I could say it better, I would. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's he, doing the work. Yeah. You know? <laughs> he also He's sings get, very well. He this. sounds great. Yeah. yeah. I like it. And, you know, musical yeah. theatre singing, musical theatre movie singing has all sorts of issues and bad well, trends. We're well, looking at you, Tom Hooper. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Your crimes. Yeah, but, yeah that's yeah. an extreme version, <laughs> but also the other end of the spectrum where it's just auto-tuned to the heavens. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. This was a pretty good medium. Um, and probably having a director like Min- Lin-Manuel Miranda, who, yeah. you know, is um, w- would, would be very focused on doing that well, didn't hurt. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the issues that, um, you know, can't be – separated from this film one of them is sort of like the 90s the 90s mm. is very in right now it's new york mm-hmm. um but obviously it's during the time that the aids crisis is absolutely enveloping um the city and a lot of his friends etc um uh, uh are falling victim to it um what did we think of that and did I was under the impression for many years, even though I read it long ago and, you know, have seen Rent before and all of that, I, I think I assumed that Larson himself may have had AIDS at mm. one point and that's how he died because he, for context, very famously died just before Rent ended up opening on Broadway. But I think there's an assumption out there that because AIDS is featured in Rent and all of that, that it was due to that, but it but it wasn't Mm. um yeah yeah it's a big myth in musical theater that yeah jonathan larson died of aids related causes yeah brain aneurysm yeah still extremely tragic Mm. Um, and and watching this film um because i'd never seen tick tick boom before but like right from the beginning tick tick like we're away the clock is counting down and mm. the fact that he he wrote that this mm. wasn't something that was like written about him yeah it's unreal after he isn't died it? like he wrote this yes yes i actually that was one of the first things i said about it after finishing it was even though there was a lot i didn't it just really wasn't my type of film um i did when it finished i just went wow it's just so unreal and so meta mm. that he wrote that yeah. not knowing that he had less than 10 years to live less than 8 years yeah before he would die like it he was, really was running out of time like Lin Manuel's Hamilton running out of time oh. there's a little crossover <laughs> post posthumously they have changed the character from John to Jonathan Larson, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm fairly certain that in the original musical... It's John. It's just John. Okay. And but it's a self-insert. No, yeah, absolutely. But yeah. that for the purpose of the film, um, it's become... Keep it a, explicit. Yeah, a biography. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, some of the other actors in this are, are pretty good. I thought Robin Day Jesus was quite good. He's in the original cast of um, In the Heights, I think. And yeah. he's done a few things um, in film and on Broadway as well. But I thought he gave a really great sort of supporting performance in this as the friend kind of character. Yeah, I liked him. I liked him because it kind of revealed the um, humanity behind the the rent equivalent of Benny, mm. you know, the friend. Yeah, the, true. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. The, the friend that sold himself friend. out for corporate life. And, yeah. you know, Mark, of course, is Jonathan Larson. Yeah. You know, the – the white guy who's actually from a middle class background mm. and actually doesn't have AIDS and actually yeah. isn't actually has parents that he could go to if he needed help, but he's watching all of these people and around writing him. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got the camera, like, yeah. So, um, yeah. Benny's always annoyed me um, because I'm like, why are we, you know, looking down at this man for kind of just doing what a lot of people have to do, which yeah. is, you know, just work because that's life. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was nice to see. Um, the character of Jonathan Larson in Lent get get ch- uh, in Tick Tick Boom get chastised a bit for that mm. sort of judgment. Yeah. Um, so I did like that character and I liked that actor. Um, yeah. Alexandra Ship plays um, the partner of Jonathan Larson in this. I thought she did a really good job as well, although she did have to kind of share a few moments, including her big song with mm. um, Vanessa Hudgens, yeah. mm. who was sort of playing the, I guess the. Uh, surrogate for her mm. in the show that Jonathan is writing, but like, um, what do we think of her? Um, yeah, I mean, um, Alexandra Ship, uh, she was 
fine in the role. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that um, potentially, I don't know, the the writing um, almost is very male-centric in the whole Mm. film. Yeah, Yeah, the role was a bit limited. Yeah, I think that that probably had a bit to do with the underdevelopment of her character. Yeah. Um, Because back in the 90s when Jonathan Larson wrote this, um, you didn't really have to write about women. It was, you know, it was about the man. But so just adding these secondary characters, um, it doesn't feel very genuine, doesn't feel very real to me. Yeah. Um, it just feels like someone that is a bit of a vessel. Sure, sure. Um, for yeah. the lead male character. Yeah. Um, and I don't love that at all. Yeah, okay. Well, he's obviously grown since tic- like since he wrote Tick, Tick, Boom, them in that rent. Um, you know, uh. here I am praising rent. It actually does have some iconic female characters in it. Um, so yeah, that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 he obviously grew. There. Yeah, but they kind of stand on rent is like a, you know it's an ensemble show yeah. basically. This whole film, um, all of the other characters, you know, are, we could mention you know Ven- Vanessa Hudgens and Joshua Henry who play the backup um, sort of singers, but mm. we don't really get to see much of them and who yeah. they are. Mm. They're really just device. They're just there basically to sing some of the songs. Yeah, yeah. and even Judith Light who. Can I interject here for something? Yeah. Have none of you have seen Tick, Tick, Boom, the show? No. <laughs> so in the show, it's just three actors. Right. And it's just um, one one man plays John, Johnny, and the two other, the male and the female, play mainly Susan, the girlfriend, and Michael, the friend. Mm-hmm. But they also play a bunch of other characters. They're kind of like the second and third, sort of like. Yeah, John they're the life. swings. So, yeah, so it's kind of this whole thing where what Lin Manuel, what Lin Manuel has done is he's separated the two events. So, the, the, yeah. the premiere of Tick Tick Boom and then the story, the real story. Yeah. But in the show, it's kind of all together. Mm. So, it's more of a shared experience rather than just having you know, just the, the singers, Vanessa and Joshua. And then the act, the actual sure. real life people. Yeah, so it yeah. probably it was a bit like. But they've done it a few different ways. I yeah. think with the play as well. I think it's. I think it did start as a one man show. Oh yeah. Really, as that well. footage of Jonathan Larson yeah. doing yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and so yeah, but yeah, with this film, it's definitely it's definitely like told from his perspective. Yeah. So even with Sundime and um, yeah. and his agent, we're mm. just seeing. And, and and his girlfriend. We're yeah. just seeing what he yeah. sees, yeah. basically. Yeah, his picture. And so they're quite like, yeah, they're not super active yeah. characters and ha- with a lot of backstory for themselves. Yeah. That's I think, what he sees. I think going back to the AIDS crisis, I think one thing that he really um, should be remembered for is uh, putting that in people's faces mm. and making it, um, making it part of popular culture. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, the Reagan era did nightmares for the AIDS crisis in terms of stigmatizing yeah. and yeah. Um, making sure that people were scared of gay people. And yeah. I think just, um, you know, even in writing Rent and characters featured in this film, making his best friends, I mean, this is based on his life and having his best friends who were HIV positive and then dying of AIDS. Showing them on screen, I think that's that's really a positive message and and yeah. something that um, you know is is not. I don't want to call it brave, but I think it's just um, it's nice to see that it's being spoken about still. And because yeah. Yeah. Um, these people that lived through that generation, um, they will always remember that, and um, it's nice to see that they won't be forgotten. Agreed. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Even, you're right. And even though um, just musically as a show, Rent and Tick to Boom aren't for me, um, I probably am a little bit um, young in terms of uh, when that had its biggest impact. But the legacy that Rent Lee has left is immense. And a testament to that is the fact that Tick to Boom did so well based on the merit of how much people lo- still love Rent. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That is kind of where my sort of niceness towards the film uh, probably ends because as bye a now. film, goodbye now. Bye bye. Yeah, it's been fun, um, but but it's a similar kind of criticism to Rent. Yeah. Um, in that, what I think makes this film not so great. It's not a bad film. Mm. I don't think it doesn't really do too much to kind of too much new with the formula yeah. of the movie musical. Is yeah. what I would say overall. Mm. But yet, I also think that. Um, 
the hype of musical theatre people normally ruins things for me. <laughs> yeah. And that's certainly been a little bit of the aspect here. There's a big scene where, you know, every Broadway performer yeah, under the, the sun is in this Sunday number. And, you know, visually it's kind of, you know, interesting what he's done, but like – it's um, stuffed with a couple of things. There were Easter eggs and mm. there's been 4,000 blog posts from Broadway kind of sites which just like all the Broadway performers that are in this one scene that I can just imagine and I've heard some reviewers that aren't musical theatre people watching a premiere of this in New York and every musical theatre fan squealing at yeah. the top of their lungs. It's Cheetah Barrero. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Um, that kind of stuff generally annoys me and sort of, hinders my view of films yeah it's the musical theater equivalent of toby Maguire and um andrew garfield popping up in the marvel don't you know. spoil it for me <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing yeah to me is quite self-indulgent mm. the whole movie yeah the self-indulgence doesn't stop from start to finish yeah it's no <laughs> it's why it's so remarkable that Garfield still comes off as yeah. likeable yeah. and yeah. I really enjoyed his performance and I'd yeah. love to see him, you know, be nominated for an Oscar. But, yeah, yeah it's, even, it's Lin-Manuel's self-indulgence. Like ev- everyone everyone involved with the film, it's a self-indulgence. Yeah. And that and that's what I can't stand yeah. when I see in, you know, 2022 and 20, you know, in the years, pre- people that we know do a production of Rent yeah. and go, this show is about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> this is dealing with a crisis that you, yeah. even in the COVID era, like you can't, you can't really yeah. fully comprehend the subject matter of this. Yeah. And also, <laughs> no, this show is not about you. <laughs> yeah. Completely different genres and scales, yeah. but there's a difference between Denis saying Dune is my favourite um, book and I've always wanted to make that into the movie it should be, mm-hmm. as opposed to Lin Manuel Miranda going, oh, um, tick tick boom. I just I love it so much and I have to put my spin on it. <laughs> like they they you know yeah. Denise not putting himself in the kitchen in June. Yeah, he's no, just yeah. doing a really damn good job of making it look perfect because he's yeah. putting himself in the in the seat. Um, as an audience member, Lin Manuel is putting himself as Lin Manuel in the sure. seat and, and going, "I made this for me, yeah. no one else." Well, Lin did this. I think he does the. Ex- he pulls the same trick in in the Heights. There's yeah. this very self indulgent, um, self <laughs> self insert of himself. Piragua, Pira. yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah, uh, the, yeah. But that just character like plays. the end yeah. of that film with on the beach. Him being one of the most spoiler alert, but him <laughs> being one of the few significant people yeah. in um, Usnavi's life yeah. all standing on the beach being like, good luck. It's just like, I and don't Lynn's know that the sort of got, I don't <laughs> know that like my ice cream man. He's yeah. doing this, you know, you know. I get it. It's a smile. tight-knit yeah. community, but I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can see from the outside why people that don't really like musical theatre f- it's closely tied to like finding musical theatre people extremely annoying. <laughs> but you know what they also hate, Amy? Yeah. Is musical theatre people like us yeah. who when they like an accessible musical movie, we sometimes a down. terrible <laughs> musical movie, yeah. they're like, what did you think? And you're yeah. like, I don't know. And they're um, like, oh, you wanted to hate yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're a snob. You're a musical theatre yeah, snob. Yeah. Oh, but the three of us are elitists. And we are, yeah. Well, that's my point. And if you're listening to this, then that's your choice. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Look, uh, overall, yeah. yeah, I thought it was sort of like a f- perfectly reasonable film. Yeah, so. a, a, f- a reasonably well-made, middle-of-the-road take on a okay musical um, by, you know, um, an ex- extremely successful uh, musical theatre writer yeah. Yeah. who is not a, um, a, a movie director. Um, starring a an actor who's had this sort of breakout performance, and I will never feel that personally. I'll never feel the desire to watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> I've got all I needed to get from it. Yeah, like, once. I'm, I feel exactly the same way. And I cannot remember a single song. No, not that we're we don't we don't need to go into criticizing the musical itself too much. It, but yeah, I don't remember a single song. I yeah. What was that? I just remember the one that sounds like Rent. How's it yeah. go? At the start. Uh, do you Every song that Jonathan writes. Give, like, give me a topic. Hat. <laughs> Our podcast. Our podcast. Why do I listen to a podcast <laughs> where three people bitch about movies all night and all day? <laughs> I mean, you could say that about any, you know, or two of it. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a limit. Although the sun, even though we're sitting here going, oh, all of these cameos, you know, you can't help but get a little bit emotional at the Stephen Sondheim. 
Um, but that's an, but that's a yeah. I, I enjoyed that because it's Whitford. He did a really interesting, you know, he had an interesting take on Sondheim. Mm. Yeah, and he was acting. But then, and then the actual Stephen Sondheim's voice was on the the um, voice m- male machine. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. I thought that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. but you know, yeah. it's part of the story. Yeah, it's not. And I love Bradley Whitford. I thought he was great. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was really good as well. And what was sad about. Sometimes voice on the voicemail is that he sounded so young. Mm. He still sounded really young and sharp and yeah. Yeah. Really. He was a brilliant man. Yeah. And he had an eye for talent. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that part of it was good. Yeah. And I think that's different to just shoving every Broadway yeah. performer you have. Yeah. There's a way to do it, right? Yeah. 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 So Out of what context, they did with Sunday was great. Yeah. As opposed to, look, let's all like applaud ourselves. Yeah. This, this movie is about us. It's for us. Yeah. It yeah. features us. <laughs> and then final mention, Judith Light. I, I'm a big Judith Light fan. She played the agent. Oh, yeah. And even before she spoke a line, yeah, yeah, yeah. I started speaking in, in the voice I knew she was about to do. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Jonathan. It's I was <laughs> like, I'm here. I'm here for it. Let's you always love this Light. character. Yeah. It's my character. Yeah. 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 And you can see me play that character very soon. <laughs> It's that time again. We all know that time. What time? It's quiz time. time. Oh, quiz time. Tick, yep. tick, tick, tick. Boom. I'm going to be asking you three questions. Oh, God. Each yeah. answer, and the person who answers correctly gets a point. <sighs> all right. First question. Yeah. True or false? Jack Nicholson has been nominated for 13 Academy Awards. I'm going to go on my gut instinct and say false. I'm going to say true. The answer is false. He has been nominated for 12 Academy Awards. Wow. That's still more than I would have thought, to be honest. Yeah. Question two. How many actors have played James Bond? And a bonus point for each one you can name. Oh, Dom, this has got to be your question. So the first answer is the answer of how many actors have played, the number. And then I can get you both to provide. And then we can go with the person who provided the least first. And then if you both get the same answer, um, then I can just go to both of you. All right, I'll go first because Dom's going to do better at this question than me. So I'll just spin off what I do know, which is not a lot. I'm not a, I'm not a big James Bond person. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, I'm just going to guess, um, uh, 11 James Bond films. Oh, like, oh, was, oh James Bond actors. Actors, yeah. Okay. All right. Less. I'm going to guess seven. Seven? Yeah. Okay. Please name. Um, Roger Moore, Sean Connery, um, Pierce Brosnan, <laughs> never forget, <laughs> um, uh, Daniel Craig, that's my four. Can think of four. I think that's all I've got in me. Okay. Yeah. Is this just in like 007 films, or is this including like other weird spin-offs of Bond? Uh, no, just in the main I series of James see, Bond. This is what I mean. Dumb, yeah. Yeah. Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I'm, I'm. Can I list the names and then I count them? Okay. So Sean Connery. Yep. Uh, George Lazenby. Yep. Roger Moore. Yep. Timothy Dalton. Yes. Pierce Brosnan. Yes. Daniel Craig. Yeah. Six. That's correct. A king. Yeah, baby. Yeah. I'm back in business. Yes. Correct. One all. And to be honest, even though I knew I was going to lose, I did better than I was expecting now that I know yeah. the answer. Yeah, you did pretty well. Yeah. Okay. Final question. Which movies have over 24 minutes of just staring in them? Oh, man. I hate this sort of questions. Oh, it's not even any options. <laughs> which, which movies have 24 minutes of staring? Of plain staring. Mm. Just overall. Overall. Not a scene that it's goes... It's a series of movies. Oh. And overall, they have 24 minutes of staring. Do they get parodied for their staring? Yes. All right, okay. Let me think about it. No, there was no sound here. It reminds me of the way Bollywood edits their films, um, where they do all the like crazy cuts between two characters just looking at each yeah, other yeah. For, <laughs> for, you know, five minutes. But no, uh, I feel like I would know this, but I just don't know that I know it. 
I literally don't know. I'm okay. going to say something like Kill Bill. Amy. Okay. Give me a second. It's a series of films. Yeah. Yeah, like all, yeah, one after the other. Staring. Tick, tick, boom, baby. Mm. 24 minutes of staring. Sorry, I really want to think about this. You can cut out some of the silence. No, I think like <laughs> our audience. Our audience is enjoying <laughs> It could. The answer could be this. This is the dis- <laughs> very soon. <laughs> <laughs> just stare at you. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Um, Curtis is doing some acting for me. I'm gonna know it. This is so annoying. All right, come on. We gotta have a time. Yeah. <laughs> you're time yeah, you're definitely playing. cutting this. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just say? Tell me how many films there are in the, the group. Oh god, no, I don't know. No. I don't know. <laughs> John knows. I looked at okay. the answers. He oh, wrote right, the answers. Course. There's heaps. John um, literally. I do all the work. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna. I can't. I'm drawing. Oh, we on. spoke about this recently. Yeah. You and me. Yeah. Fudge. <laughs> I literally picked the trial. Oh shit, there is. I literally picked one for you and one for John. Sorry, no one got that. Yeah, we both lose. Yeah. 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 It was Twilight. Twilight. Oh, it's gonna. That yeah, was I was in my trying, head. Oh, I was gonna say that even though I took twenty four minutes to answer and I didn't <laughs> say it. Twenty four minutes like in the films. <laughs> yeah. Well, that wraps up another edition of We'll Get It in Post. Folks, what is on the poster this week from the critics? I think my thing is going to be creating puns related to the movie we've reviewed, I've decided. So for this week I'll say the critics said that um, on the Tick Tick Boom podcast today. We simply wished there was even more time than we spent with Amy, mm. Dom <laughs> and Curtis. Mm. Wasn't as good as last week's. Wow. Um, no, that's fair. That'll make it better. You know, sometimes you, know, you take a risk and you fail and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Curtis. Mine would say, just as Tick Tick Boom should not have been made, <laughs> this podcast should definitely have been made. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Jeez. All right. That's actually a really nice one. I didn't think we'd get that sort of review from you it's this quite, week. It's kind of mean to, yep. What's yours? I think mine would be, although it's called We'll Get It in Post, I don't think they did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And with that, that's the end of our show this week. This was really one for the fans. It was one for you. Nope. No, you know gone. who you they're are. They're gone. All right. Yeah. Oh, bye, uh, Rob. <laughs> Happy Thanks movie so watching, movie yeah. lovers. Happy yeah. movie watching. Thanks for joining us. And we'll be back next week with another movie review. Bye-bye now. Bye. How do you do a podcast when life is a fiction? How do you do a podcast when life is a fiction? Renting swing. 